Shabbat Shalom, Mashpaka. Shabbat Shalom. All right, this is Brother Kahal, and right next to me, I have Brother, uh, Brother Kassab. Uh, praise be to the Most High for you, people uh, that's watching, coming to watch this lesson in Periscope, and uh, YouTube of this lesson um, that we're about to be for the next time. First and foremost, we're going to give all praises due to the Most High. Ahaya Bashi, Yashimashi, Yawa, Wakadash, Kekamawa. And, you know, Mashiach is who the world called Christ. I guess I froze. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> a little technical, technical difficulty, so hopefully, hopefully, this works. Yeah. All right. We good. So, yeah. Praise the most high. So, anyway, so, you know, this is the season that, uh, you know, we're coming up on. Um, what the world call uh, uh, ho- uh, holidays, which we know holidays are, are actually holy days, okay? All right, so when we go through this lesson, I want you guys to keep in mind <clears throat> that um, there's only two spirits operating in the earth, and anything you do in life, um, as you're doing it towards the fallen one, the serpent, or you're doing it towards the most high. There's no there's no in between, there's no neutral, there's nothing in the middle, there's no uh, I just want to be left alone and let everybody else figure it out. If you're not with the most high, you know, if you, if you're against them, you know, you're for the other. That's just how it works. Okay? So you got to you got to understand the significance of the things that we do, you know, on earth. Okay? And so now we're coming up on these days these days, the pivotal time of the year where everybody becomes jolly and merry and come together and I'm um, in celebration and, and and for what the world has been taught, you know, is celebrating these uh, days to, you know, God, okay? So it's like, okay, we'll see if this is a God that's prescribed in the Bible of what you're doing, all right? So we're going to deal with this tradition, so... With today's title of this today's lesson is titled Thanksgiving, which is coming up. This is uh, the Shabbat in the next um, <coughs> excuse me, next Thursday, which you know from today will be what today we call the, uh, the World Thanksgiving, and it says Thank, the title lesson is Thanksgiving. What God are you feasting to? Okay. And there's no there's no such thing as neutral feast. So I don't care what religion or what what you could be part of Buddhist, you could be part of Kenneth, you could be part of the Muslim movement, you could be part of whatever movement. If it's not of the most high, it's of the fallen one. Don't matter what faith you are. You can even be a part of the Christian Christian movement if it is not of the most high, it's of the serpent, which we understand to be the fallen one. So that's a, that's only two places you can be. Okay, so who, who are you feasting, doing this feast to? Okay, so speaking to the children of Israel, just because this book is written about, this book is, uh, the, uh, the Bible is about our forefathers, and from what, you know, was taught, uh, what was done within our forefathers is what we're supposed to teach to the world, so we're going to start at the house of the Most High, which is the children of Israel, which we are the people of the book. So we're going to deal with us, and then and anybody that's out there that's of the other nations is watching just follow suit by, based on the children of Israel, what is required of us, okay? So with that being said, our first script we're going to go to is Deuteronomy 32 and 21. So this is – this scripture is still one of these training lessons you know, for you, if you want to talk to your family members about these feast days that's coming up, you know what I mean, uh, and you need some Bible scripts, you know, to go, you know, talk to them about it, you know, here's some scripts that's going to be available to you, or you can show them this video if you think this video is edifying, and, um, you know, see see what happens with it. But we're going to start with, you know, the fall of our nation based on the same practices that we are doing today. You know, Bible, you know, said – you know, no new thing under the sun. So we're doing the same mistakes over and over and over again 
that we've done in history that causes fault, okay? So with that being said, we're going to start off here so we'll understand what, how the Father is feeling about us right now as the children of Israel, okay? Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 21. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not the most high. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those, with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. All right, next scripture, we're going to go into the Apocrypha. is Judas chapter 5. That's the next, in the Apocrypha. Judas chapter 5. So, children of Israel, we have a propensity back in the time just to anger our God, doing things <coughs> to the God, uh, the, the, to the fallen gods, the serpents and stuff. So, um, you know, the children, you have that propensity to just keep doing it over and over and over and over again. And the father just finally says, you know what? You know, you, you want to keep chasing these guys? I'm going to put you under those guys, under the people that these guys rule over and see if you like it. And all us Israelites do, even in our ignorance, you know, we, we sit there and we sit there. Conference muted. Um, yeah, we, we, we complain about the things that happen to us under, the, under these nations. You know, it doesn't matter what it is, if it's the oppression of their court system, the oppression of the workforce, the oppression of just your everyday life, you know, how, where you live, where they live. It doesn't matter. You complain about it. But as soon as we try to tell you that you're the children of Israel, and this is why this is the way it is, then a lot of times people just, ah, oh, no, I'm not trying to deal with that. We're all the same. We're all equal. And so it's like double talking. It's like, what is it? Are you oppressed? You know what I'm saying? Or, or are you equal with everybody? You know what I mean? But this is what it is. The Most High put us under the other nations because we provoked them to jealousy, chasing after their gods. So now we're under their gods and them, and they all the suppression that they were doing to us, they loving it and stuff as a as a nation. Okay, when I talk about individuals, I'm talking about as a nation, okay, because I'm pretty sure even the individuals, they love the fact that their nation is ruling, okay, even though they say it could be really friendly with you or real cool with you or, hey, this is my best buddy, but they love the fact that, cause I, I'm not going to lie, if it, was, uh, if it was Israel ruling, I'd be happy, you know, if, you know, of course, in righteousness, I wouldn't want to be ruling in a rich, wicked world, but I'd be happy, so i, I can't blame them for being happy that their people are ruling, even though they can say, oh, this is my brother. Oh, he's cool. You know, I knew him since we were children. So there's nothing wrong with that, you know, because we're going to have our time as well, okay? So anyway, with that being said, now you got to remember, the Father says he, he provoked us to jealousy, and he's going to bring us to our knees under these other nations. So this, we've read the scriptures and other lessons before. We're going to bring it out again. This is what the nation are looking at us, children of Israel, when it comes to getting us to participate in following their gods, worshiping their gods, doing things to their God to make our God jealous of what we're doing, which keeps him angry with us, as we just wrote in Deuteronomy 32 and 21. All right, so Judas, chapter 5, verse 1. Judas, chapter 5, verse 1. Then it was de- then was it declared to Holofernes, the chief captain of the army of Assur, that the children of Israel had prepared for war, and had shut up the passages of the hill country, and had fortified all the tops of the high hills, and had laid impediments in the champion countries, wherewith he was very angry, and called all the princes of Moab, and the captains of Ammon and all the governors of the seacoast. All right, we're just going to read portions of this chapter. We're just putting this out there so you know that these, this is no new thing on the sun. These guys did it back then. Every uh, empire that's ruled over the children of Israel has the same blueprint. So we're just going to drop down to verse 16 and read the conversation that they're having concerning us because they know when we're in harmony with our God, they can't touch us, okay, as a nation. We were unstoppable. We're, I mean, we're like a just unmovable, you know, steel truck that can't be stopped. 
But once we're once the, the more we make our uh, God jealous at us, that's when we're wide open to a whole bunch of stuff. So look at the conversation that they're having concerning us and our God. All right. So we're jumping down to verse sixteen. Verse sixteen, and they cast forth before them the Canaanite, the Pharisite, and the Jebusite, and the Sycamite, and all the Gergesites. And they dwelt in that country many days. And whilst they sinned not before their power, they prospered, because the Most High that hated iniquity was with them. So when we're, as a nation, not dealing with iniquity, God, uh, the Most High God of the heavens are working with us. That's just... It's just that simple. It doesn't get no more uh, simple than that. Go ahead. But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, they were destroyed in many battles very sore and were led captives into a land that was not theirs. And the temple of their power was cast to the ground, and their cities were taken by the enemies. We're showing you, follow our God. You're strong. We don't follow our God. We're weak. All right, go ahead. Verse 19. But now are they return to their power and are come up from the places where they were scattered and have possessed Jerusalem where their sanctuary is and are seated in the hill country, for it was desolate. Now, therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin and let us go up and we shall overcome them. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by, lest their Lord defend them and their power be for them, and we become a reproach before all the world. Uh, Jeremiah 10 and 1. So, so this is a great thing. You don't even, this is a beautiful thing about the Holy Scriptures. You don't have to be amongst the people to know what their conversation is and what they're saying. We see well, we just read here, we see these people playing this scripture out. We see them playing out. We just don't have the privilege to be a gnat on the wall while they're having the conversation, but the conversation's already been had in scripture. All they're trying to do the whole time is to keep us sinning against God, so we'll stay weak before, before them, and we'll just stay up under their feet. Okay? So let's see when it comes to, you know, these things. What is your instruction from your God? Because... This is one of the key things if you want to become strong before before your enemies, okay? Jeremiah uh, 10 and 1. What if I bring out this precept? Oh, go ahead. Uh, this is uh, Isaiah 59 and 1. It says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, and the, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. So, you know, just like uh, the brother mentioned, you know, the Most High is dealing with, with the children of Israel. So when he says your iniquities, right, he's not talking about all people. He's talking to his people. So just like we just read in Judah, you know, when we sin, the Israelites, uh, that the sins, the, the curses go on our people, um, you know, more than the other nations. Like, their their judgment is, is going to come, but, you know, we get judged immediately for breaking his commandments. So just wanted to bring that out. But, um, oh, yeah, and then that's the whole game. It's a, you know, keep them people sinning and, and let, let them enjoy their sins. Yeah, make it accessible for them, make it fun for them, and make it everything, long as they are not attached to their God. We don't care what they do. And that's basically the game. It's a game. It's a mental game. And you don't even know you're caught up in it because if you refuse to read the scriptures for what they say, you know, you're, you're going to be deceived. Okay? All right, so let's go. Jeremiah 10 and 1. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you. All right, right here, the scripture, the, it, when you read this scripture here, and there's a lot of scriptures like that, it's like... <coughs> The Most High is speaking to you directly from the throne, okay? He's telling you something right here. It's a conversation. This word right here is a conversation between the Most High and you right now as you are reading the scripture. Start over again, right, please. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. 
Thus saith the Most High, learn not the way of the heathen. Stop right there. He said, learn not the way of the heathen. That was our original instruction. Now, but because of the curses and because we kept chasing the gods of the other nation, you know, we ended up dealing with these other nations. However, once you wake up and really start reading the scriptures and learning what they are for yourself, then we're supposed to separate from the things that we've learned from the heathen. Okay, because all it is doing, it may seem fun in nature because you're dealing with these things in a wicked kingdom, so it seems normal. However, it's harming you, harming your spirit at the same time. Okay, and they're just smiling and laughing at you as they can have control and they have their thumb on your back. Okay, as long as you're participating in it. Tell, them, tell people, tell, you know, go to your job, your, your so-called job, and tell these people that, oh, you don't want to participate in their Christmas party and see how they react to you. You know, and a lot of them, they, they'll get upset. They'll feel a certain kind of way. They ain't going to know why, but they're going to feel a certain kind of way because it's all spiritual. Okay, but go ahead. That's said the most high. Learn not the way of the heathen. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. He says the customs of the people are vain. So when we're dealing with the things that the heathen do, which is not Israelite, and their customs, he's telling you, I don't like them. It's not for you. You do not deal with these things. They are vain. Children of Israel. Eventually, if you are of another nation, you're going to be following Israel, so it's best if you separate from it as well. But right now, it's exclusively talking about Israelites because it harms you spiritually when you deal with the customs of these other nations, even in your ignorance. Now, when you know and you're doing it knowingly, that takes it to a whole different level, okay? But even in your ignorance, it's still harming you because you are not tapping into the full power of the Most High because we are still dealing with the gods of the other nations. Okay? So let's go to Second Kings 10 and 18. I'm done with that. Yeah, I'll just precept that because just the point in that was already made. Yeah, so Second Kings uh, 2 and 18. Second Kings chapter 2, verse 18. And Jehu gathered all the people together and said unto them, Ahab, subject, and said unto them, Ahab served Baal, uh, the fallen one, I won't say that name, just yeah. spot, but uh, a little, but Jehu shall serve him much. Verse 19, Now therefore call unto me all the prophets of the fallen one, all his servants and all his priests, let none be wanting, for I have a great sacrifice to do to the fallen one. Whosoever shall be wanting, he shall not live. But Jehu did it in subtly, how you say that word? Subtlety. Subtlety, to the intent that he might destroy the worshippers of the fallen one. All right. So the reason we're dressed up is just to show you that. <coughs> There were sacrifices that they made to the fallen one, the serpent. Okay, so we're going to go show you what sacrifices are, okay? And because when you do sacrifices, those sacrifices, you know, the, you know, kill an animal, and then they offer that sacrifice to the God, either you're offering it to the Most High or you're offering it to the fallen one. Now, we don't do, in this land, we don't physically go and slaughter these animals, but it's being slaughtered for us. So the, that part of it and portion of it is already being done for us. For us. So already the food's probably been sacrificed to their to, to the particular gods, but the, the the actually coming together and the feasting that's going to be the problem. So we're going to show you first what sacrificing is. So we're going to go into the strong concordance. H2077, and we're going to look up this word sacrifice so you see what that means, okay? Go ahead, read that. H2077, Zabak, from H2076, properly a slaughter, that is, the flesh of an animal, 
by implication a sacrifice, offering, sacrifice. Okay, Exodus 32 and 2. So that anytime there's an animal slaughtered, it's called a sacrifice. If a man goes out there and slaughters an animal, whether you're going out there hunting, regular hunting, or if you're just you on a farm, it doesn't matter. It's called a sacrifice. So what is your sacrifice to? Because the, the, the animal sacrificed his life or her life so you can live. It's, that's what it's constantly doing. But what did we do behind these sacrifices? We, you know, we didn't just kill the animal and just let it be, or we didn't just kill the animal and burn it. But all the sacrifices came with the feast. So we're going to show you in Scripture, there's two points in this scripture, this, these line of scriptures we're going to go to. First point that we're going to show you in the Scripture that when there's a sacrifice done, there's a feast that comes with the sacrifice. All right, animal dies, then you rally around and feast to it. Two, we're going to show you because... You are calling on the most, you calling on God and you're doing a sacrifice doesn't mean it is of the most high. So you can't do an unrighteous sacrifice or participate in an unrighteous feast and say, oh well, God knows my heart and think you're gonna call, you're gonna say, oh this is, this is God, man, He knows my heart. He knows I'm about Him and all this, uh, that, the customs and the rituals of the other people. I ain't dealing with all that. I, he knows my heart. He knows I'm with Him. No, it doesn't work that way. So we're gonna show you those two that's the main reason by going into these scriptures that we're about to go into is those two points that I really want you to focus on as we read those scriptures. Okay? So Exodus 32 and 20. How many, I'm sorry, Slotty, 30, 32 and 2. Slotty. All right, this is the book of Exodus chapter 32, verse 2. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people broke off the golden earrings which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand, and fashioned it with a graven tool, after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. So they made a golden calf, and, and they put that in place of the Most High, saying, you know, they just made it in saying this is the God that brought them up out of Egypt. Now, this is Aaron. Now, this is a priest that was with Moses, right? All right, go ahead. Verse 5. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. So here's a feast that's taking place to the gods. Let's see what, what these, this feast entails. Go ahead. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings. Burnt offerings, which we know is, is used with animals, animals dying, and they use them as burnt offerings to feast on. Go ahead. And brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink. And, 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 and rose up to play, right? So, so you know these feasts, these sacrifices, there's a feast that goes behind it, and that's what Thanksgiving's about. You got these animals that died, and people are coming together for a feast now. Okay, go ahead. Verse 7, and the, and the Most High said unto Moses, Go, get thee down, for thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them, they have made them a molten calf, and have worshipped it, and have sacrificed thereunto, and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. All right, Colossians 2 and 8. All right, so there you see it right there. This is one of the pivotal mistakes that Aaron made, you know, sacrificing to, you know, one of the fallen gods made a, um, you know, a, a molten image and stuff. So because... You know, and he's out. Now, just think how high ranking of a person Aaron is from the children of Israel back in that day. He's right up under Moses. And look what he's doing, and it's, and it's unrighteous according to the Most High. So don't think that, oh, you can, like I said, oh, I'm going to this <coughs> Thanksgiving dinner, and all your family's around, and you know better, and you right up in there participate. Well, you know, I'm not a part of all that. That's them. I'm just here with my family. And you feasting, which you know these are sacrifices that's been made to the fallen gods. 
you know, and rallying you around. Now, do we all, do we pr- pretty much all eat their food? Yeah, well, we're going to get into why we're eating their food and, and stuff like that. But however, this is, their holiday is a holy day, a holy gathering, a holy, a holy gathering to their God. Okay, so when you participate in that, especially knowingly, that's what's harming you as the children of Israel because we are not supposed to be participating in these things. Okay? All right, so let's go to Colossians 2 and 8. All right, Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Philosophy, just basic scripture. We're going to break this down at another time. But philosophy is basically somebody just running their mouth, not bringing out scriptures, lining up precepts to bring points together. They're just talking based on how they feel. This is this is in my heart. This is what I think, and all this other stuff. And they really have no scriptures to back up what they're saying. Oh God knows, He knows he ain't, you ain't trying to follow no uh, no no following by feasting at that house. You know, you go ahead and feast. There ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, because you respect the person that is coming from. No, you're going to follow it because you respect that person, but you don't have the scriptures to back up and justify why you're doing what you're doing. You know, that's, that's, that's what is in the vein of philosophy, okay? Saying that something's righteous or this is what you should do, but, you, you know, there's no scriptural foundation to back you up, okay? Go ahead. Beware well, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After t- Excuse me, after the tradition of men. After the tradition of men. Man, the Most High has his tradition, and man has their tradition. And you're going to follow after. Which tradition are you going to follow after, the Most High or man? And I know man's on the earth face-to-face with you, and he can make it sound all pretty, all good. He can talk a good one in your ear about why it's okay to do what you the man's doing a post of what's lined out for you in the Bible and stuff. But he says, beware of that. That's philosophy. Go ahead. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Rudiments of the world. That means the world, the whole world participates, so why ain't you? Okay? These are the, this is our tradition. Man, we just do uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, let me see. Uh, Leviticus 23 and 4 is next. Man, everybody does it. I've been doing it since I was a child. My family's been participating, and it's okay, you know. And the whole world is doing it, so what's the problem? But he's telling you right there, traditions of men, the whole world's going to be doing it, but it's not after Christ. So if you're calling yourself somebody who's like, all right, I'm going to be part of that select few set apart people that follow, uh, follow Christ, and gets persecuted for his namesake and dust and dust for it, then you have to remove yourself from the traditions of men and what the world marvels after so you can be in line with Christ as you do the other things that Christ lays out. So as long as you're dealing with traditions of men and you're falling after the rudiments of the world doing everything, then most likely you're not dealing with Christ because a lot of those things, the rudiments and the traditions of men falls up under another God. And we're about to read that right now. No, no, not, not right now. Oh, actually, we skipped the verse. No, we did. Did we skip a verse? No. All right, Deuteronomy. Yes, well, I skipped. I skipped the verse. Now, we're not going to Leviticus 24, 3 and 4. We're going to Levit, uh, Deuteronomy 4, 19. I skipped, not, not uh, my brother here. Uh, brother's going to bring out a script real quick. So uh, this is Mark 7 and 9. It says, And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of the Most High, that ye may keep your own tradition. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he says, this is the words of Yahshua Christ, right? He says, We reject the commandments of the Most High, meaning, like we, the brothers, you know, we're getting to it, Leviticus 23, the Most High has his own holy days, but a lot of people reject those days and they keep their own traditions, mm-hmm. things that are not scripturally founded. You know, in Mark, uh, what is that, John 7 and 38, he says, believe on me yeah, as the scriptures have said. Yeah. So, you know, you ask yourself, <laughs> where, where, where is Thanksgiving in the scriptures? Where did Christ command you to do that? Mm-hmm. Right? But he commands us to have, you know, to keep the holy days, keep the seats, the clouds over, 
you know, uh, tabernacles, all the holy days in Leviticus 23 that we're going to get into. But Yeah, I mean, he basically, like I said, he said it's not after Christ. So these traditions of men, rudiments of the world, it's not after Christ. Mm-hmm. So if you call yourself a lover of Christ, just, you just understand where you're at when it comes down to traditions of men, rudiments of the world, okay? Just remember that. All right, so we go to Deuteronomy 4.19. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 19. And let thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven. Now this is a commandment to the children of Israel in the wilderness with uh, Moses at that time. And it transcends till to this day because we are the descendants of those people that were in the wilderness. Go ahead. And when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the hosts of heaven, shouldest should us be driven to worship them and serve them. We are not allowed as the children of Israel to serve any of those luminaries that you, all those lights you see in the sky, which are angels, one form of an angel or another. They all got their ranking system up there. We are not allowed to worship nor serve any of those. Okay? That harms our spirit when we deal with the other, with the, uh, with the fallen gods. Alright? Go ahead. Should be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Most High thy power hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. So right there. So when you're dealing with the traditions of the other nations, you are dealing with those fallen gods. Okay. They do not. They do not follow and deal with the God of the heavens. They deal with the fallen gods. That's what's been divided for them. That's the traditions that they're dealing with. So if you're the children of Israel and it's like, okay, Thanksgiving, oh, everybody's doing it, yeah, but is that tradition of the Israelites? No, then obviously that, because every nation has their own God. Every single nation on the earth has its own God. Nobody's left out. So if you're dealing with uh, Esau's tradition, it's a God that comes with it. If you're dealing with Hamite, there's a God coming. If you're dealing with the Muslims, there's a God that's coming with it. And guess what? When they're dealing with the children of Israel, we have the supreme God. We have the Allah Hayim, you know, uh, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the three highest ranking beings on the, uh, uh, in this whole universe belongs to us. Okay? So every nation has its God. So it doesn't matter. And so if you don't see these traditions, in the Bible, under uh, the God of Israel, then it's going under another God when he just told you we're not dealing with the God of the other nation. That's not what we're supposed to do, all right? So just, just understand that. Every nation has its own God. All right, go ahead. Uh, but the Lord hath taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance, as ye are this day. All right, Colossians 2 and 18 is next. So we are the inheritance of the Most High. We belong to him. So those other gods, you know, they are not allowed. They, they haven't been allowed to any of us, you know. Now, we do, are we dealing with them now? Yeah, because what we just read earlier in Deuteronomy 32, because we kept chasing them, okay. But we're, we're, as long as we're chasing those gods, it's harming us. Physically, spiritually, sick, we're all sick all the time. You know, we're the strongest people on the earth, and we look all frail and all bugged out on the streets and stuff because we've been given a commandment by the God, so, uh, God of heaven. So when we follow their gods, their traditions, and chasing the rudiments of the world, that's the, that's the state of mind, being, and physical uh, health that we stand because we are not following the commandments of the Most High. Mm. All right? Go ahead, huh? <laughs> Corinthians 10 and 20. But I say, the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to the Most High. Mm. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. Mm. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Mm. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? So, you know, that's right there. He said, that's why he says, learn not the way of the heathen, right? 
and uh, you know their customs are vain. He says you can't be a partaker of the Most High's table and the table of the devils, right? Meaning the things that they're sacrificing these ho- these holidays, right? This comes with with sacrifices, like the brother mentioned. So, you know, praise the Most High, man. He, see, I'm I'm trying to keep the lesson short. <laughs> so, you know, what I'm, I'm trying to like I got knocked down to like three and a half pages. I'm like, okay, I'm trying to keep this like an hour, but you know, precepts you can't stop the precepts from coming out. You know what I'm saying? It's all laid there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Man, praise the Most High. You know, but and I'm, and they try to leave. The, the, the Periscope world of the land and the, the, the YouTube world, some pre- open precepts so you guys can build on this shell. This, this is just a general shell. Try to keep this lesson as simple as possible. Love the precepts that are coming out. Try to keep it as simple as possible so this is something that you can build even further of understanding if you don't already have a strong, solid understanding on this. But that was beautiful, man. I mean, Deuteronomy tells you they have the fallen God. He says they sacrifice the devil. So if you're dealing with their traditions, you understand and when you, you sit down at the table at Thanksgiving, and it's not a tradition of the children of Israel, guess who you're sacrificing and you're, you're eating to? Take a wild guess on that one. All right? But we're going to show you, you know, a few. We're not going to go through all the feasts of, uh, of the children of Israel, but we're going to go through a few of the feasts of the children of Israel and see if Thanksgiving and and the the, the holy days that they have the, the world has if they're coming up in the, any of these. All right, so let's go to Leviticus twenty three and four. Leviticus. Oh, uh, sorry, block it, man. I'm just all. Oh, I want to get to that Leviticus for some reason. I, I'm skipping down. I just want to get to Leviticus. All right, Colossians, I'm oh, sorry, Slock it, Slock, uh, uh, Colossians 2 and 18. Uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse 18. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntarily hu- humility and worshiping of angels. Or don't let no man fool you into worshiping these angels. Your reward, what is your reward? Well, if you're t- being children of Israel born, you have an inheritance waiting for you. All you have to do is accept Christ's blood on the cross, follow his ways, lay down your sin, and just prepare yourself to endure, your, endure going into the kingdom. And then you've got this big, fat inheritance sitting there just waiting for you because the Most High has been wanting to bless you this whole time. But because we still want to deal with the fallen God's world, you know, we just stuck in this whirlwind of sin and madness and evil and things that, you know, he's like, man, we constantly got a uh, murmuring about it. However, if you just lay it all down, be patient, like Christ says in uh, Revelation, and endure all this mess that we got to deal with knowing what this world's about, we have a big inheritance. But let no man beguile you of involuntary worshiping of angels because that's what you're doing when you sit down at a uh, Thanksgiving feast you sit down at a New Year's feast, and you sit down at a, you know, Christmas feast, a Easter feast, you know, uh, you go out to uh, Valentine's Day dinner with, your, with your, your significant other, you know, and all that stuff, all that feasting that you're doing, you're doing it to God, angels. And it's not about your reward, Israelites. I'm not talking about the other nations. They're not under that same commandment that you are under, Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, also, he just, he scattered his people to <laughs> as a curse, as a punishment. So, mm-hmm. you know, we're supposed to come back in to his laws. And that's the reason we got scattered. We're not supposed to be a part of the other nations and doing the things they're doing mm-hmm. in our captivity. So, Absolutely. All right, so that was good on that. We got the precept out of that where that was needed. So now... Let's get to Leviticus 20. I've been trying to get here, man. Uh, for whatever reason, man, my spirit's been driving me to get to this. I mean, I love these feast days. It's probably the reason why. Leviticus 23 and 4. Now, these are the feasts that the Most High put in the Scripture for the children of Israel. Of course, eventually, for the rest of the nations to participate in as well. Okay? So they're not left out because we are the leaders. We have to show them and, you know, this is how we get all excited for their feast days. 
we got to be more excited for our own feast days. This is the one we're connecting with the God of our heavens. Why would we want to deal with, you know, their gods and feast them behind their gods, get all excited about their stuff, and then when it comes to ours, it's like a burden, you know, ball and chain. Oh, man, you know, oh, man, we got to get up till we got the feast day this weekend. You know, come on now. You should be getting jazzed up any time a feast day come up. You know, make it fun. It ain't supposed to be burdensome, you know. But go ahead. Uh, Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 4. These are the feasts of the Most High, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. Mm -hmm. We're just listing a few, um, just so you can read over it. Of course, you go through all of um, Leviticus 23, plus the Apocrypha talked about a couple of feast days that's not mentioned in um, Leviticus um, and Deuteronomy, which is, you know, the Feast of Purim and the um, uh, Feast of Dedication. And stuff is not in those, but it's still it's in uh, later writings because those arrived at a different time because those are certain events that happened after the Exodus uh, period and stuff. So, you know, that's why you won't see them um, in this, but we're just going to list a few of them that's in Deuteronomy 23 and, um, and, and I mean, Leviticus 23 and um, Deuteronomy 16. But go ahead. Verse 5. In the fourteenth day of the first month, that even is the Lord's Passover. Mm -hmm. And on the fifteenth day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Most High. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. Oh, man. Deuteronomy 16 and 10. So that's the Feast of the Most High. Now, how many of you guys are keeping that feast? in the Christian world that picks up the very same Bible that we're reading out of. Well, of course, we're probably reading out of a different version. We're reading out of, you know, most of the Hebrew Israelites read out of the 1611, and some of them got heritage Bibles and stuff like that. But, you know, we go to the, the older version, and I know a lot of Christians read, you know, the NIV, which has been altered and restructured and all type stuff done to it, you know, scriptures taken out and reworded and everything. So, but... Basically, we at least agree that the Holy Bible is the Bible of salvation. So, what, so if we could agree there, let's just let's let's say, are you ask still the question? Are you keeping the feast of the Most High? Oh, that's Old Testament. I knew that was coming up. I'm glad you said that. So we're gonna we're gonna deal with that in a minute, though. Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 10. And thou shalt keep the feast of weeks unto the Most High thy power with a tribute of a free will offering of thy hand, which thou shalt give unto the Most High thy power, according as the Most High thy power hath blessed thee. All right, Leviticus 23 and 33. Okay, so Feast of Weeks. So you got the Passover, Feast of Weeks, you know, week-long celebration. That's like <clears throat> the first of the harvest. You know, the Passover signified when the Israel... You know, um, the death angel passed over the Israelites that put the blood on the doorpost, and then we exited, you know, um, with the unleavened cakes. Didn't have time to put yeast or anything in the cakes and stuff, so we left Egypt in haste and stuff. You know, it all got significance to it. You know, it got history behind it. That's the that's the story of our ancient forefathers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And we're supposed to celebrate that in celebration of what, what the Most High. So we always have it as a, memor a, a memorial. We can always remember these events, how the Most High delivered us, how he grew our nation, how he's blessed us. Never forget those things, okay? Of course, the world wants us to forget, and then we're dealing with their traditions under their God. All right, go ahead. Uh, Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 33. And the Most High spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto the Most High. All right, and that Feast of Tabernacles is when we was in the wilderness dwelling in tents. You know, we, was, we came out of the houses, you know, the comfortable houses in Egypt. The Bible says no new thing under the sun. So guess what? You know, he requires what's passed, so guess what? Let you figure that one out. However, you know, we dwelled in tents, all right, because that's where we were in the wilderness, in tents. It came out of the houses and stuff, so that's to remind us 
of those events. So it's so easy for us to do those things now. And plus, Jake, you know, he's a plain man like the well intense anyway, you know, and that's all 12 tribes and stuff. You look at look how we operate around the world. Jake loves to be in those tents, you know. They try to get us out of the tent into these houses, packed in like sardines, you know, um, in these ghettos, but, you know, when we when we really when we get back to our culture, our spirit gravitates because when we get inside a tent, we really feel it. It's like, man, oh, man, this, I feel comfortable here. Why do I feel better here than I do in the house? You know, mm-hmm. there you go. Make it somewhere cause yeah, we been right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Getting ahead of the lesson here. Yeah. Listen to him. Listen to this guy. Uh, that's how the spirit moves. All right. So all right. So let's go to Amos five and twenty one. Amos, uh, the book of Amos, chapter 5, verse 21. I hate, I despise your feast days, and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. All right, so now right here he's talking about things that was going down in the land. But however, as we know, because we're the children of Israel right now, we are not in the physical place called Jerusalem, but wherever Judah is, and the rest of the children of Israel, that's where the land is. This is where his people, that's where his temple is. His temple moves. Jerusalem is constantly moving. Jerusalem's everywhere now. Okay? It's where his people, because uh, we are the temple of the Most High. So these practices that was happening inside the land is now happening outside the land. No new thing under the sun. He required what is past. So the same mistakes and abominations we did there, we're doing here. Now, see, I and mean, before we even go even further, now we're going to start it over. Think about it. When you look at the when you look at the um, feast days in the Bible, do you see a turkey in there? Do you see? And I'm talking about the basics of Thanksgiving dinner. The basics, right? You have a turkey. Is that in Scripture? Uh, part of the the feast of the Most High. Stuffing or dressing, is that part of any feast of the Most High? Then you've got the cranberry sauce that represents the blood. You know, that, that, you know we know Esau loved that blood, and that cranberry sauce is king, man. You, you, people only eat cranberry sauce but once a year. It's like, wait, you know what I'm saying? I can see if they ate cranberry. I mean, you still, at least people do eat turkey you know, throughout, you know, whatever. But no, once a year or twice a year, you know, because sometimes they'll carry that over to Christmas, mm-hmm. and eating cranberry sauce. That's what Re- they your feast day. Yeah. yeah. This is what you want. Yeah. What you so that's your blood right there, right? That's a representative of blood. And then you got maybe your pumpkin pie. You know, of course, you know, a lot of, you know, Judah like sweet potato pies. However, all those are your basic stuff. Now, oh, of course, you gotta have the ham. You gotta have the Thanksgiving ham. There's gotta be some pig in there somewhere. All right. So that's your that's your basis. Now, of course, people won't have other things to add on to that. You know what I'm saying? But those are your basic the feasting for the for your Thanksgiving. Where is any of that in Scripture concerning any feast days with 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 the Most High? And he has a lot of feasts lined up, and he tells you exactly what to bring to his feast. So there's no misunderstanding of what's required. I ain't seen not one turkey, not one cranberry sauce, not one uh, stuffing or dressing or pumpkin pie or sweet potato. I ain't seen none of that. Okay? So now we've carried that abomination that we did in the land now we carried it all the way over into these lands right here. And he's going to explain to you, when you're doing these things, and when you're participating in these things, I'm just, he's telling you, this is a conversation he's having with you right now, how he feels about it as he's watching you do this. All right? So just so you know, so if you do this moving forward, this is how he's feeling about you. I'm talking to children of Israel. Now, if you're of another nation, you're under another God for right now, we'll deal with you in the future. But right now, children of Israel, this is how he's feeling about you as you're participating. Okay? Go ahead. Start over if you don't mind. Uh, Amos chapter 5, verse 21. I hate, I despise your feast days, 
and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. So he's not he's not participating in it. Whether you're you're doing this feast to the Most High or the I'm doing this to my family. No, 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 it don't work that way, bro. I'm sorry. This is a spiritual world. You know, you can't escape it no matter how hard you try. You're either doing it to the Most High or you're doing it to the fallen one. Those are our only two choices, and there's no middle ground, one or the other, all right? And he's telling you how he feels about it right here. Go ahead. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. Mm -hmm. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs. For I will not hear the melody of thy vow. Now, because you, yeah, um, yeah, because you're singing to the Most High, and, and you're, you're feasting behind. Oh, this is a wonderful meal, and praise God! And, all, and he's telling you, take that away from. He's not dealing with it. <laughs> okay, you can sing as loud, and you can be as soulful, and from the gut, you can be crying, and got everybody jumping around, and all that stuff. And he's telling you, take that mess away from me. Okay? Just so you know, you can try as hard as you want. They honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Okay? So if you're doing it, don't think because you can pray hard and do all these other things that it's making some head, headway with them. He's telling you right here how he's looking at you while you're doing this. Okay? Go ahead. Verse 24. But let judgment run down as waters, and righteousness as a mighty stream. Have ye offered unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness forty years, O house of Israel? Mm -hmm. For ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch, or Slaket, oh, Father, forgive me if I'm saying these names, uh, uh, and your images, yeah, that's another one, the oh. star of your, your God which ye made to yourselves. Mm -hmm. Therefore will I cause you to go into captivity beyond Damascus, saith the Most High, whose name is the God of hosts. All right, Deuteronomy 28, 48. That's why we're in captivity today. That's why our ancient forefathers were shackled up on ships and were here today still in captivity. Whether you acknowledge it or not, or you know it or not, we are in captivity. We're here as slaves, and it's not going to change until Yashin Hamashiach, who the world knows as Christ, deliver us. Okay, this is prison. All right, this is this is our prison. Being out here amongst these other nations, dealing with their laws, their gods, their ways, their customs, their mindset, their everything. Okay, and we only have little small moments to enjoy one another's in our own mindset and what we love to do, okay? And then it's back to slaving, you know? All right, so Deuteronomy 28 and 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. This is one of the curses. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies, which the Most High shall send against thee, in, excuse me, in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. All right, Deuteronomy 28, 64 is next. We are in want of all things uh, to these nations because we kept chasing their gods. And that means our, even our traditions that we're dealing with now. That's one of all things. So we're, we come up as a baby, we're being indoctrinated into this madness called their, their holidays or their holy days. That's part of one of all things until we really come into the knowledge of the truth. Okay? So we, we, we start off behind the eight ball. And we got to fight our way out. Okay? And his brother brought this scripture out earlier, so we're going to read it now. So next is Jeremiah 17 and 4. Maybe, uh, 64 first. Oh, sloppy. Oh, man. All right, so Keep me on point, man. I don't know why she's skipping around. All right, Deuteronomy 28, 64. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. Uh-huh. And the Most High shall scatter thee among all people. So we've been scattered. We were once in Jerusalem, fled into Africa, pulled out of Africa, scattered over here into these lands called America. All right? Go ahead. From the one end of the earth 
even unto the earth. I've traveled a long way. This is far away from Jerusalem. Go ahead. And there thou shalt serve other gods. In this place we will be doing what? Thou shalt serve other gods. Nothing's changed. We're still dealing in these lands. And a lot of us that still sleep to the truth of what's going on around us are dealing with these other gods. Especially if you're dealing with their uh, with their holy days. Go ahead. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. So we don't know these gods. We haven't been we haven't been formally introduced to these gods. That's why it says in humility and involuntarily worshiping of angels, because a lot of us is doing it in ignorance. I'm pretty sure, for the most part, the children of Israel, if you really they understood in their spirit that. Christmas is attached to the fallen one. You know, Santa's unscrambled. Think about it. And what color is the suit on Santa? You know, think about it. Anyway, if you really understood strongly in your spirit, most of them would be like, man, I ain't dealing with that. But still, case in point, so locked in to these traditions that it's like you just don't want to deal with it, don't want to talk about it. It's like, ah, oh, this is too much, man. I've been doing this all my life. And I can't see life without Christmas or, you know, man, my family just comes together on things. I ain't seen my family in so long, and this is when they release the slaves. Of course they're going to release you to go because that brings them power. You're separating from your God brings them power. And then who worships, who has the strongest ability to worship on this earth? The children of Israel. So when we start worshiping their gods and reverencing their gods, that brings us in subjection and them more powerful because we are giving reverence to their God. So, of course, they're going to release you and let you take care, do all that stuff. They get blessed on the back end. Okay? So, you know, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. All right? It's, it's, they're not doing it because it's just overly being nice. They're doing it for their own benefit. All right? Now you go tell them that you're gonna you're gonna do this and you're gonna go to Passover. I'm gonna go to Passover for a week. See how they how they see how nice they are then. Well, you know what? I'll work on Christmas. I'll, I'll work on Thanksgiving. I just want the week off of the Passover and the Tabernacle. You start saying that and see the difference. And you're gonna see how nice these people really are. Well, I don't recognize those holy. Well, that's right. I'll work during that time. So when there's nobody working, I'll be working during the time that you guys are doing that, and then just let me off during those times. Okay, so then you'll see that they're not doing it for just before it being nice. It's so they're going to gain power through your participation under their God. That's how it works. Okay? Sure. You know, this is, what does it say in Revelation? The fallen one deceiveth the whole oh, world. Uh-huh. So it's a lot of, you know, trickery, playing on our emotions and, Mm-hmm. Feels good, all mm-hmm. family, peer pressure. Said, Beware the wilds of the, of the fallen one. Right, the fiery darts. So you got a lot of them, man. You know, and as much as you you get study up, you still be sitting up there slipping up in his stuff. You're like, oh man, I get caught up in that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, man, I should have known better. But hey, man, he just, right. He's more wise. I mean, he's he's more crafty than the wisest man walking on this earth. So you gotta stay on your toes dealing with him. Oh. All right, Jeremiah 17 and 4. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thy heritage. This is what we're doing. We've been discontinued from our heritage. So we really don't know strongly our own heritage, so we're dealing with the traditions of the other nations. Mm-hmm. Okay? Because of the fall, because we were chasing their God, so now we're dealing with them. So when we wake up, we're just like, oh, man, God, I want the Passover now. I really want the Passover. He's like, ah, you stay over there and see, you know, now you're awake dealing with these guys now. See how, how fun it is to have all that fall out all lives around you when you could be singing to me, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> how you like it now, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, it's kind of, uh, that's what we have. Yeah, start over. Uh, verse Jeremiah 17 and 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee. Mm-hmm. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. That's which we're doing right now. It's written twice. So let me just stop right there. Uh, for ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, man. We're in a land that we know it not. And his kin is a, is a, is a, is a fire that's burning forever. Uh, Isaiah 1 and 11. It's true, too. It says discontinue from thine heritage. So, you know, that's why the, the, the days in the Bible that are connected to your heritage seem strange because you've been disconnected from your heritage. So, mm-hmm. you know, people say, when you tell people, hey, the, the Israelites, you know, you got to celebrate Passover. They're like, Passover, what is that? Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it seems strange because you don't know that's actually part of your heritage. Yeah. You know, they think that, it's like when you tell them about the Holy Days, they think that, it's like mm-hmm. people think you just in a in a corner like, you know, like <laughs> yeah you know, yeah against the wall yeah no and it's, it's, it's the same thing that a, a, a brother and sisters do anyway you know we, a lot of our brothers and sisters barbecue and hang out and chill music. yeah music and just kick it in music. pop up and talk about the things that's important to them you know so we do the same exact thing you can be doing the same thing yeah. that you're doing at these other days but in righteousness mm-hmm. you know not everything I won't say everything of course but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kick the kick the forty to the side, man. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. We, you know, we 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 kind of like, you know, just like, all right. But other than that, we do the same thing. Just chill and talk about the Most High, and man, just waiting on this kingdom and holy convocation. Yeah, holy just, and it's a blessing and what 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 He's done for us, man, and um how much mercy he's shown us because we deserve to be destroyed and he's still sustaining us through it, through it all. He said, he just told you his fire is burning forever. So, you know, that fire, you know, we, we, we just hope, hopefully we, we stay away from that fire. Hold up real quick. We want to make sure this thing is still recording. All right, we're good. All right, so, so with that being said, you know, you know, the thing about it, and, and, and also you got to go back to uh, Judas. You're telling these other nations they wrote, wrote they read our records. They know they're never going to teach you. They've been the authority. Just think about it. Who controls your theologians? The theologian seminary schools. The other nations. You know, that your pastors or whatever has to go through, you know, to be able to have his own pulpit. Who, who's over the general education? Mm-hmm. Okay. Who's teaching? Who's educating society? So, you know, they know your records and they're not gonna, they're not gonna tell you what's going on because they know that's their rulership over you. Right. So that's why these, right. these, these holy days seem weird. And stuff, you know, mm-hmm. but it's real. Psalms you know, eighty three, but mm-hmm. it's cut them off from being a nation. Mm-hmm. Exactly. All right, so let's go hit it. Isaiah one and eleven. Isaiah chapter one verse eleven. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? Saith the Most High, I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs, or of he-goats. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand, to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hateth. Mm. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. So don't think that that you're all, you got, oh, we got 50, we got 100 people coming together celebrating this to the most high. Your numbers don't matter. You can have 40,000 of you assembled in the same place doing evil before the most high, calling yourself assembling unto him. Mm. And, oh, God knows my heart, doesn't, that doesn't work. Sorry. It doesn't work. He's telling you how he feels about it right here. There's a conversation for you. All right? He said, they are troubling to me, man. Uh-huh. Like, man, here they, you know, 
Here they go again. Like, we're gonna do it. Oh man, the, the stiff-necked people. No matter what you tell them, I'm about to destroy you. You keep doing that, and they'll do it anyway. They're gonna test it out all the way until the lightning bolts come, and then as soon as the lightning bolts coming out of the sky, then they they want to rethink it at that point. You know. Go ahead. We got more on it. Verse 15. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Spread forth your hands. Throwing your hands up in the air. says, oh, God. Oh, God of Israel. Well, no, you won't say God of Most of y'all won't say God of Israel. You know, y'all just say God. You know, you know in the name of, the, uh, name of Christ, you know, we just love this feast and this meal that you brought us together on. So you're praying. Everybody's together praying. And he's telling you how he's feeling about it while you're doing this. When you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Mm. Man, I don't want to see it. I don't want to yeah. hear it. You know. there's, it. There's no way you can smooth them, uh, smooth them on it. You just can't do it. Uh, right, real quick, wow. Yeah, just real quick, because this, this is uh, Proverbs 29. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's what he's talking about. Uh, back in Isaiah, it says, verse 16, Wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Come now. That sounds all. No, that's real, that sounds all little stuff that Christ was telling us to do. Isaiah is just laying it out here. Christ tells us to do it later, but this is what Isaiah is laying it out right now. The same thing. So go ahead. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Most High. So now he's trying to reason with you. Now this is us bringing, this, bringing these scriptures out, bringing this understanding out through the Spirit of the Most High. This is the Most High trying to reason with you right now. Okay, I know you've been dealing with it. I put you in slavery because of the you, your forefathers broke the contract. You inherited the curses. Now you're waking up. Some, you know, now I got I'm setting people up to kind of lead you to the truth and understanding, I'm reasoning with you now, come off that stuff. All right? You've been operating in ignorance. Most high weak at a pastime ignorance. Now he's calling all flesh into repentance. So turn away from that now. All right? This is him reasoning with you right now. Okay? Go ahead. Come now and let us reason together, said the Most High. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. You repent from it, it's not as if you've never done it before. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Mm-hmm. See, that's the mercy of the Most High. You see how just he is? He know what he did to you. He know, you know, he, know he, 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 he did this to us, understanding it was a contract that we was under and stuff. So he knows that you had no forethought of what was going on. However, this is your reasoning. This is, you know, this is your opportunity. Repent. Turn away from this stuff. It's evil. No matter how good it's sent, how do you think the fallen one's going to deceive you? He's not going to come with a pitchfork poking at you. He didn't do that to Eve in the garden. He sweet talked her. Got in her ear. He talked sweet nothings in her ear. You know, told her that she's going to be like a god. She's going to be like God. That's why, you know, hey. Don't worry about him. He don't want you to get it, you know, all powerful like himself. So just, just do what I say. You're going to be okay. You know? That's how a fallen one works. So, you know, he's going to keep you sinning through your own pleasures. But Christmas fun. Oh, well, you're going to have to figure out a different kind of fun now. So go ahead. Uh, if you be willing and obedient. You shall eat the good of the land. Mm. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Most High hath spoken it. That's your choices. <laughs> 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 
Take your pick. That's as clear as day. Take your pick. All right? We're almost done. We've got a few more scripts left. Now we're going into Matthew. Matthew 17, Matthew 26 and 17. So either you're going to repent from it or you're going to be destroyed by the sword. There you go. And that's coming. And, it's, and most, you know, most likely it's going to be in this generational lifetime. The wars, wars, and rumors of wars are out there. So just sit back and watch as well as pray always. All right, Matthew 26, 17. Matthew chapter 26, verse 17. Now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Yeshua, Mashiach, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? All right, John 7 and 1 is next. The reason why I brought that scripture in is just showing you. Christ kept the holy day. The people are, oh, that's the Old Testament. That's the Old Testament law. Christ nailed that to the cross. You know, all right, no, 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 wait a minute. Let's stop for it. It's bad enough, okay, you try to bring somebody out of the Old Testament, they'll tell you, oh, the Old Testament's done away with, that's the old laws, old covenant, old this, old that. All right, so then we show you things that Christ did, then nothing matters past the fact that he got, it's New Testament, but he got nailed to the cross, and everything that was before him getting nailed to the cross is now no longer void, except for tithing. To the uh, tithing is that that somehow kept. I mean, everything else got nailed, but tithing. Where where that says that in scripture, I don't know. But however, that kept somehow. All right, got nailed to the cross. But you're showing Christ is dealing with the Passover. Christians, Christ followers. Passover. All right. Next, John seven and one. Uh, John chapter seven verse one. After these things, Yeshua walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry, because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. Feast of tabernacles. That's another feast, right? From the Old Testament, dealing with it during crisis time. Go ahead. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence and go into Judea, that the, that, it's like that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. For neither did his brethren believe in him. Then Yeshua said unto them, my time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but me it hated, because I testify of it, that the works thereof are evil. The works of it is evil. Go ye up unto this feast. Go what? Go ye up unto this feast. So that's a commandment. Christ was given a commandment of that day. Go ye up to that feast, this feast which is talking about the Feast of Tabernacle, commandment of Christ. Christ follows Christians. You say you follow Christ, Christ is given a commandment. Ye, ye, go up ye to this feast, Feast of Tabernacle. So where are you celebrating the Feast of Tabernacle that your Lord and Savior commanded the uh, disciples to do? The same people that you are learning from. Christ kept it, the disciples kept it. So now it's done away with where? Who, who did away with it? Oh, beware of philosophy and vain deceit. Your pastor told you. Who told your pastor? The world theologians who, who are having the same conversation that they had in Judas. So the same people that taught your pastors are doing the same talking that they did in Judas. But your Lord and Savior is saying, go to the Feast of uh, Tabernacles. Where is he saying Thanksgiving? Right. Like, like the brother said, that's a commandment. You mm -hmm. know, what does Christ say in John 14, 15? If you love me, keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people that are, you know, caught up in Christ Christianity, oh, I love Christ. You know, I love Christ. Christ is my Lord. He's my Savior. 
But he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Mm-hmm. Right? This is a commandment he's given us. He's not asking. He said, hey, man, you know, you guys want to hang. I'm not going, but if you guys want to hang with me, it's cool. But, you know, if you want to go to the feast, which one is the one you want to do, you know, let me know. It was not one of them type things. He said, go ye to this feast. Mm-hmm. He said, all scripture is given for inspiration, mm-hmm. you know, because people will read that and be like, well, you know, he's not speaking to me. He's speaking to the Jews. And, mm-hmm. yeah, and then try to get, you know, yeah. smart with the scriptures. It's like, just do what the scripture <laughs> said. Just keep it simple. You try to outsmart the most high. You know, yeah. You get yourself in trouble, man. So Absolutely. You know. Just keep it simple, man. Yeah, read that through. Uh, go ye up unto this feast. Mm-hmm. I go not up unto this feast, for my time is not yet full come. Mm-hmm. There you go. First John 2 and 6. Okay? You had a special mission. We all don't got that particular mission. However, we got micro, little micro commons, commons, commons of that. I think I said it right of that mission. He had the big mission. Right? Yeah, yeah, two more strips. Some technical difficulties, so uh, yeah. Is there something Yeah, I just wait. I see you, sisters and Latifah. Just hang on for a minute. We got two more scripts. Is not working them? No, it's just charging. It goes like in and out. It's charging, and if you move it the wrong way, it's just cut off. So. I got at least need to be at like 2%, something like that. I take a minute, a few minutes. Just bear with us a little bit, sis. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was another page or something. Nah, it's two more scripts, period. Yeah, you can have one of those. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to cut them down, man. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to cut them down. Uh, 
trying to trying to put out more milk than meat. I see that. Nowhere written in Bible either. What? Oh, Cohen. Cohen. Yeah. Oh, where's Cohen? Cohen's. Where's that written? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. That, I think they say that. Levi? Levi said it from Levi. Yeah. I ain't never seen it. You look up Cohen. Yeah. <laughs> you got to use somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Trump choosing white men as judges. Highest rate in decades. Can I get another cord? Nah, I don't need another cord. 
just needs to be, I got to wait until it's about at least 2% every time I move it. You know what I'm saying? And that core is not, it's going in and out. Mm -hmm. So it's, it gets off of it. It just turns on. You want to just finish it on the conference call? Mm -hmm. Uh... So you ain't gonna you ain't gonna be able to get it. I mean, I will. I just I gotta wait for a little bit until I can to it. It charges a little. See so you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that way, it just the phone keeps turning off every time I'm messing with the charger because it's not charged. If I was to do it on a conference call, we'd have to open up a new recording. Because, you know, because it's been recording and we've just been sitting there talking. So we'd have to, like, do, like, a pause it and then restart another recording. A little pause it. Well, we can do that.